Hi, my name is Matan Rosenberg. I'm from Northern Ohio Scrap. I'm actually fourth generation. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you how we operate our Genesis shears. Today, we're going to be looking at our 775 on our Doosan 420. And I'm going to be showing you about what exactly we cut, how we cycle our blades to get maximum life out of our blades, and how we would cut some uh, rougher material and, and when we would do that. So when you're putting on fresh blades on your shear and you put it just, just put them all on and have everything set up, you want to start with some lighter material and make sure that you get your use out of the blades with all the shims and everything, everything, all the tolerances are tight. Um, once you start having bigger tolerance in your blades, you can start cutting some stuff that's a little bit heavier, like these trucks we have behind me. Um, when you're cutting trucks and things like that, or cylinders, you want to make sure you're not cutting hardened shafts, leaf springs, and that stuff can damage the blades and damage other parts of the shear. It's very abusive. Um, some of those things can be sheared, but you want to watch because obviously your set of blades is going to be your most expensive part that you're consuming on the shear. So to get your maximum life out of that, we're going to show you some tips and tricks today with Genesis Equipment and how we do that here at Northern Ohio Scrap. Here at Northern Ohio Scrap, we're a family owned and operated business and we try to be precise and take care of our equipment. Uh, operating on a shear like this is very important to be precise to get long life out of your blades and your all of your equipment in general. Um, some of the things that are most vulnerable on a shear are going to be your tip, your piercing tip. And so basically what you want to do is, is ensure that you're using that only when you need to. So you don't want to be rubbing that in the dirt, you don't want to be piercing things unnecessary. Um, only pieces that are larger than to fit into the jaw. You want to try to get everything up into the apex of the shear here and here and make sure you roll things up. Sometimes I'll set pieces on the ground, use other piles of scrap, make sure you get the piece all the way up into the apex of the shear, um, utilize that. Um, you can also utilize the geometry of this um, by changing your shear angle to kind of scoop pieces up off the ground, grab it, make sure you want it. Um, before I make complete any cuts on something questionable like these trucks that I was cutting up here earlier, you definitely want to make sure you see what's in your jaw, see what you're cutting, take a look, make sure you're not cutting hardened shafts, axles, leaf springs, uh, forks, anything like that. Um, it's very important to be aware of what you're cutting, what's inside of it, and all that. Um, it could be dangerous and it could be damaging to your equipment. So again, we try to take very good care of our stuff, try to cycle it out so we'll start on light stuff and when we get to that heavy stuff, we're still watching exactly what we're cutting. Um, make sure that we're not using that tip too much, only on stuff we need to, that's a big thing. Um, make sure all of our bolts are staying tight, inspect that, inspect all your points on your shear, um, that's a huge thing. So things like axles and things like that, you don't really want to cut. You can typically break them off the mounts without actually cutting the hardened point parts of them. Um, frame or beam or pipe or anything like that, you want to make sure you're getting it all the way up into the apex of here, not piercing beam down there, um, all things like that. So uh, let's take a walk around and look at some of these piles here. 